We're going to take a slightly different approach to our spotlights this month. Instead of a business and community spotlight, we have some interesting activities that involve the topic of growth to share with you. Since the subject of growth encompasses a wide range of issues, there are other factors to consider, both economic and ethical. The news today suggests the scale of the human enterprise has outgrown our planet. We survive today only by borrowing vital resources from future generations, yet we persist on a business-as-usual course. Why? Three powerful forces prevent us from making the progress required. The cultural myth that growth is necessary for prosperity, propaganda and undue influence from growth profiteers, and our inability to appropriately assess dangers that don't appear to be immediate. In a new documentary called Hooked on Growth, filmmaker David Gardner tackles some of these thorny issues. We had the opportunity to talk with him recently through our partners at Peak Moment TV. Here's what he had to say. The American dream could be about to become a nightmare. We can have a culture of sustainability or a culture of growth, and when it's time for us to choose. I'm working on a film that helps us to look in the mirror and identify this culture of growth and what are, what are the values, what are the myths that are keeping us from reacting rationally to the evidence that we're hitting the limits to growth today. Some of these icebergs are melting. You can feel, there we are. The collapse of all fish and seafood species by 2050. We've had um, food riots. World energy demand will grow by 50%. This water manager telling me we can't keep up with a growing population. At least 36 states will face water shortages. America's population could hit 1 billion people. People have seen a nearly 40 cent hike in gas prices in a single day. What is going on here? What is going on here? For a long time, more and better, we were pretty much in the same direction. When we were really poor, um, each increment of uh, economic prosperity brought with it a certain quanta of human satisfaction. Accelerating economic growth somehow in, in the minds of people who don't understand what's going on, that means better lives for people. What we have is this human desire to become bigger and to become richer. Growth is presented as the solution to problems it has never solved. A future of hope and opportunity begins with a growing economy. We are a nation of consumers. I want it all! Hey, yeah. I want it all! The ka of Christmas. Consumers like us, Natalie, account for two-thirds of this economy. It's good for America when the consumer spends money. The economy, well, it didn't grow fast enough. We have consumption growing only 1.8%. A lot of negative economic news. A quarter million jobs lost. Consumer spending took its biggest dive. The economy was receding. Major sectors of America's financial system are at risk of shutting down. This is America's economic Pearl Harbor. We are facing the greatest economic challenge of our lifetime. It's a race to correct an economy that's deteriorating daily. Somewhere between seven and eight trillion dollars has been pledged, loaned, yeah. or spent to stimulate this economy. We are now being, for the first time in history, faced with this discontinuity that you, that what we have been doing for the last thousand years is unsustainable. Now, we no longer find ourselves growing happier as our economy grows or even as our individual prosperity grows. Individuals get wealthy from promoting growth, but if that's just a few individuals, but all the rest of us have to pay the price. We are changing and have changed the atmosphere to the point where we're threatening our very uh, sustainability. We are causing an extinction of the working parts of our life support systems, that is the other animals and the plants and the microorganisms of the planet at a scale unseen in the last 65 million years. And there's this culture of growth and the culture of sustainability. And we're going to have to choose. We keep thinking we can grow forever. And the resource limitation is, is upon us. You know, that's almost un-American to stop growth or to talking about stopping growth. They assume that we can grow forever. Or if we can't grow forever, that the end of growth is so far out there that we don't need to include it in this plan. Only people who have the 
can't take off their shoes to count up to 20 don't understand we have a population problem. Human beings have used more natural resources since the end of World War II than in all of human history before. At some point, human economic growth is going to doom our children. We can have a transition to a sustainable economy, but trying to overpower the institutional and psychic inheritance that growth has left us is going to be very difficult. It's like a drug addict is strung out on growth. You've got to have growth, you've got to have your, your drug in order to just maintain normalcy. The, the good news is that there's still a wonderful life that we can leave our children. Sounds like here's where we are. Dave, tell us about the film. Well, Hooked on Growth is a nonprofit documentary, feature-length documentary that should be out early in 2011 with a little luck. We've, I've been working on it for a long time, but we're approaching the, the completion point. And uh, in a nutshell, uh, we are seeking the cure for growth addiction. Uh, the film Hooked on Growth takes a look at our uh, modern society and asks why are we behaving irrationally. When you think about it, if you look in the news, it's not hard to see overwhelming evidence that we are hitting the limits to growth today. There is a silent killer in our society affecting the lives of millions. Chances are it has struck your neighbors, your boss, and elected officials. Tragically, it's affecting our children and their future. The news reports species are disappearing, water tables dropping, and ice melting. Fertile soil is eroding, and people are starving. But the reports don't name the cause. They don't mention its name. The killer is growth addiction, an insatiable craving for more, for ever-growing economies, ever-expanding cities, increasing consumption, and more and more people. Is it like a runaway, you know, illusion, but it's still runaway? It I mean, is. Have you seen anything halting it other than natural forces? We are on a, you know, it's like we are on a, in a convertible with Thelma and Louise <laughs> speeding toward a cliff, you know? And we are, we, the cliff is out there, but it's just, it just seems distant enough that we don't recognize it. So we're in that speeding convertible and we're, right now we're tuning, the, retuning the radio, but we haven't really changed our direction. Uh, and, and Paul Ehrlich, one of the, uh, the biologists who I, uh, one of the biologists I've interviewed, he says, you know, all we're doing is delaying collapse by a few weeks or a few months maybe. Yeah. It's that sort of inevitable is what he's saying. It's if we don't make major changes, I mean, we really need a major paradigm shift. The current thinking uh, from scientists out there is that we're using anywhere from 30 to 40 percent more of the Earth's resources than, uh, than is sustainable. Now, we, we can get by with that temporarily, but, uh, but what but that means is we're... we're from the future? Yeah, we're liquidating the planet of its resources, okay. so right. we can't do that forever. I've talked a lot about economic growth, but also population growth is a part of the, the subject. Uh, and that's a, something I hope to explain well in the film, is that, uh, you know, you, population and consul consumption multiply each other. And so if you have a lot of population, you have to have a whole lot less consumption to come up with a sustainable balance. Okay. If you have uh, a lot of consumption, then you have to have a much smaller population. Right. We're still forecasting more people, no relief in sight for the foreseeable future. Beside the traffic jams and smog, food and water shortages are predicted. We can look forward to fisheries collapse as well. It's not looking good for greenhouse gas emissions either. As if there's one solution to the challenges facing our planet today, it's to quit chasing more and to begin embracing less. And while less consumption and emission are critical parts of any solution, they can't be effective if we don't have less population as well. The world is not sustainable at the present population. We have too many people. We're already way, way above what the planet can sustain in the long term. Human beings have used more natural resources since the end of World War II than in all of human history before. The whole reason that consumption has become an issue is because there are so many of us that there is not enough to share for all. The most recent calculations are that a sustainable population which gave people a maximum number of options 
would be about two billion or one and a half billion people. So the key is to bring population to a stable level. Whether it's food or water shortages, climate change, species extinction, or peak oil, every problem is multiplied by increasing population. If you manage somehow to half each person's consumption on average, but you allow population size to double, you haven't gained at all. Because if you have half as much consumption per person, but twice as many persons, you're right where you started from. Since we need immediate, dramatic action to avoid major climate disruption and ecological collapse, one of the best things we can do is let our population decline for a while, starting now, by significantly, voluntarily lowering our birth rate. If you're going to talk about a sustainable society, you then have to let the population decline. Gradual population decline is exactly what we want. And the sooner we move in that direction, the more likely we are to avoid a really catastrophic problem for humanity. Our long-term survival requires a sustainable population. So here's how you can be part of the solution. Insist on a sustainable population policy in your city, your state, and your nation. Conceive a child only by intention. And please consider an expanding population's impact on the planet when planning the size of your family. Instead of a miserable future for lots of children, let's create a magnificent future for fewer children. That strikes me as one of the most tricky topics of all. I mean, you've got, you've got millions of years of human history, you know, of having enough people to keep the tribe together and scarcity or whatever, a and religious and a lot of beliefs that we, I mean, th th that has to go counter to. Totally. Also. And I guess it's the rebel in me that makes me, you know, that attracts me to that kind of subject. Why is it? It's become such a taboo to talk about it. Uh, and people make a lot of assumptions about your motives. They make a lot of assumptions about what your solutions are before you ever sure. even open your mouth with sure. those. Sure. You want to do population the first moment. You say population control and I don't get a choice and all kinds of yeah. yeah. And so I want to explore that. I'm not necessarily going to offer a prescription, but I think it, you know, the more we talk about it, the more open we are about it. We, can, we take away the power of the taboo to keep us from acting yeah. rationally. Um, but another thing is that, and this is going to be unique about my film, there's certainly been other films about the, you know, the end of empire and economic growth and peak oil and, and uh, unsustainability. But one of the things I hope to do in my film is show people how what we're doing at the community level really makes a huge difference. We can't have a sustainable world if it's full of communities that have unsustainable uh, goals of economic growth and population growth. So, you know, we talk about sustainable community planning. I think that the, you know, the key thing is that we have to recognize that we cannot grow forever because current models of planning are based on an endless growth scenario. What we've typically been doing in the past is subsidizing and encouraging growth as much as possible without any reservations. So most communities have been pursuing pedal to the metal growth. Subsidize as much as possible, encourage it as much as possible, make sure that every policy that you have uh, facilitates and induces as much growth as possible. So to say that you can't influence growth, I think is, uh, is, is ridiculous. We have lots of ways of influencing growth and one of them is to stop encouraging it. I'm making the film because I am optimistic, I'm hopeful, but, it, but I couldn't have picked a tougher subject. There, there is not a harder thing to, to change in the world than to get us out of, our, out of our growth addiction and into a recovery program. There's a huge mainstream audience out there who today this is just completely a foreign uh, idea. And they will walk out of the film, probably a lot of them will walk out of the film thinking, what a bunch of gobbledygook. I don't, I don't buy that for a minute. But even if they do, I don't believe they'll ever read a headline quite the same. They'll never, you know, we, we've, right now we're drinking the Kool-Aid. Every news report, every headline, yes. every yes. broadcaster really celebrates growth. And I think even the people who walk out of the film saying, I don't buy it, they will never read that headline quite the same. We'll start, they'll start hmm. on the right path. Join the movement. Pitch in. Together, we can find the cure.